This week in Michigan football history. Good afternoon to the Michigan faithful out there. Tonight, your beloved Wolverines plan to take down Mrs. Steve Clark's beloved Hawkeyes and bring home the Amos Alonzo Stag Championship Trophy. While today, there's no question that the thoroughly vanquished Buckeyes are our number one football rival in the early days of the conference, public enemy number one was unquestionably Stagg and his Chicago Maroons. Like most coaches back in the day, Stagg was an Ivy League man from Yale, where he was a star pitcher in baseball. He declined offers to play pro and turned to coaching football in the Windy City, where he quickly built a pigskin powerhouse. Stagg controlled the talent-rich Chicago area high schools and also the powerful Chicago press. He had them in his back pocket. The writers portrayed Amos Alonzo as a saint who embodied everything that was right about college sports. In reality, Stagg was just as shifty, and he was just as devious behind the scenes as most coaches in the day, willing to severely bend and even break the rules to win. In the beginning, Stagg had the upper hand on Michigan. In 1898, the Wolverines shocked the Maroons on Thanksgiving Day, and those conquering heroes inspired Louis Elbel to write The Victors. But it wasn't until Fielding H. Yost arrived in 1901 that his Michigan turned the tables. Thoroughly, Yost promptly vanquished the Maroons four straight years and left Stag reeling. The two coaches also battled off the field in recruiting. They went to every extreme to land Walter Eckersall, a 247 certified five star athlete slash quarterback. Both teams tried to offer Ecky rich deals, wink, wink, that he couldn't refuse. Stagg ended the recruiting battle when he literally dragged Eckersoft off a train platform to prevent him from joining the Wolverines. On the gridiron, Yost and Stagg faced off eight times with Yost winning six. And hurry up still holds the all-time highest Big Ten coaching winning percentage. Oh, and Chicago has not been a member of the Big Ten for over eight decades. So I ask you, why isn't Yost's name on the Big Ten championship trophy? My suggestion, how about we handle business tonight? Take the stag trophy back to Schembechler Hall and ponder this question together for the next 12 glorious months. Go Blue! Beat the Hawks! For more, read John Crick's awesome book, Stag vs. Yost. Or go to mvictors.com or wtka.com for the Key Bank Countdown to kick off. This is Greg Dooley.